If you're in the market to replace your HVAC system and you've been considering upgrading to a heat pump and potentially even consider upgrading and adding a solar to your house, or maybe you already have solar and you're wondering what the break even period is, or if you're ever actually going to break even in this video, we're going to demystify it all and spell out what the actual break even period is on a heat pump system when it's paired with the solar system. And the reason we use this as a scenario a lot is that a heat pump allows you to essentially heat and cool your home without being connected to the grid or without being dependent on the utilities and the fluctuating electrical rates. And so one of the biggest benefits when you install a heat pump system that can work well in your climate, in addition to having solar panels, is that you are able to oftentimes completely get rid of your electric bill as well as your natural gas bill and be completely energy independent and therefore fix whatever your costs are because instead of paying for you know the energy company, whatever they tell you, your electric rate should be. You just generate your own electricity in order to offset your usage. So we're gonna talk about what the actual break-even period is, and we're gonna use an example because the truth is that the break-even period is going to fluctuate, but I'm gonna tell you the right way to calculate that break-even period because a lot of people do it wrong because they leave out the most important factors that you're all probably aware of, and that's inflation. And I'll tell you how to account for inflation and what the actual energy inflation rate has been over the past 25 years and how you incorporate that into your calculations and we'll even at the uh, towards the end of this video I'll actually bust out a chart we'll bust out my laptop and we'll do a screen share and I'll show you what this looks like and where the actual break even would come in on a hypothetical example of an investment for a solar panel system as well as a heat pump system and how after accounting for inflation how much that changes your break even period in accounting for you know how you're going to recoup those costs over time and if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and you haven't done so already please make sure you subscribe for the algorithm and smash that like button if you haven't done so already and post a comment in the comment section below letting us know what you think did you find this content helpful and what other questions do you have we do read and respond to the comments regularly so if you post a comment down there we will use it to create uh, content that is pertinent and relevant to you and answers questions that are important to you considering how to get the best HVAC for your home now there's a couple things that this video is going to assume um, first off it's going to assume that you both heat your home and cool your home and we're going to assume an average bill I'm gonna spell out what that average bill is later but we're just doing that just to give you an example we're also going to give you some costs of what it would cost to install a solar system or install a heat pump system but this is by no means what it actually costs these are just numbers to give you an idea of how to calculate it I try to go on the higher side from the average home but it's really just it's gonna depend on your house if you have a bigger house your system's gonna cost more to install if you have a smaller house it's gonna cost less to install but the bottom line is the numbers or the break-even period should still roughly come out to be about the same and again that break-even period is gonna fluctuate depending on what your actual electric rates are what your actual bills are and how things pan out over the next 20 30 years in terms of you know inflation and the energy inflation rate and so that is all going to vary into it but with this video you're going to be able to understand how to calculate that so you can make an informed decision and before you just jump in and decide to get a solar system and get a heat pump one of the things that we always recommend is looking at what type of system is going to work for your house because if you live in a Nordic region or someplace very cold for example like one of the northern territories or provinces in Canada where you get uh, temperatures where it's you know on a regular basis below zero Fahrenheit or below you know negative 20 Celsius if you're in a, an area where it's that cold you don't want to just put in a standard air source heat pump you're honestly going to want to probably put in a monoblock system or an R290 system or even consider putting in some sort of geothermal heat pump because it's so cold that's going to be one of the best ways that you're able to it make financial sense because a geothermal system, for example, has a much higher COP rating or efficiency rating in cold temperatures. So it doesn't derate just because it's super cold outside. So that's something to consider. And another thing that you wanna consider when it comes to that is same thing if you're in a warmer region, heat pumps almost always make sense. This is why, you know, one of the heat pump myths we talk about a lot or that we've talked about in other videos is that heat pumps don't work in cold weather, which actually couldn't be further from the truth. We have, you know, I have a heat pump at my house. It heats down to negative. I want to say 15 degrees Fahrenheit and that's about how cold it gets there um, it definitely derates its capacity we do have backup heat so if it isn't keeping up but the bottom line is that 
that heat pump runs basically year round and we don't have, there might be one night or two nights a year where it gets below the set point where it can actually keep up and function effectively and we just don't run it. But for the most part, it still works. And so heat pumps do work in cold weather, but you wanna get the right heat pump for your climate to make sure that it works properly. And when calculating your solar payback, you want to get an idea of what your solar production is like. For example, if you live in Colorado or Southern California or Phoenix, Arizona, or someplace where it's very sunny and you know you're gonna get that payback, then solar oftentimes almost, it's hard to make it not make sense just because it's easy to get that payback because you have a lot of solar production and because you have a lot of sunny days. So that's something you also want to consider and take into effect. But we talk about that more in other videos. In this video, what we want to do is we want to show you a breakdown of how to calculate what that break-even period is. So that way, when you're getting quotes and estimates for heat pump installation, as well as solar installation, if that's something you're considering, you know what to look for and how to calculate that. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and grab my laptop so we can take a look and I'm going to show you a screen recording of what it actually looks like and how I kind of calculated some of these numbers. So you know, how to calculate a break-even point or a break-even period properly when determining whether or not it makes sense to get a solar setup and pairing it with a heat pump in your specific situation. All right, so right now we're gonna be pulling up. This is a spreadsheet I actually made for you guys to kind of articulate an average bill, a break-even scenario based on something that would be pretty average for America in terms of most homes and what the average bills are. So we're, I'm just gonna start off, I'm gonna show you this chart. Before you dive in and start reading all the different numbers on the chart, I'll explain how I kind of calculated this. But basically we're starting with a starting monthly bill of $200. This comes out to about $2,400 a year for a monthly bill. This is not or on an annual basis, and that's for a $200 monthly bill. So it's not a large bill by any means. That means that if you have you know, a larger system, this should scale accordingly. It's not because your solar panels will cost more. Your heat pump will probably be more expensive as well because you'll have a larger heat pump or multiple heat pumps if you have a larger home with higher uh, cooling and heating demands. And so that's going to play into that. Basically, we have our starting monthly bill. We also have have, as you can see here, this chart, you know, it says annual energy inflation at 3.39%. Now that's the actual inflation rate we've experienced in the energy sector over the past 25 years. So 25 years from to date, so starting in 1999 through 2024, we've had an energy inflation of 3.39%. And so where this $81.36 comes from, that stays the same every year. So this assumes this is compounding in the respect that it's just once a year annually, we'll assume your bill goes up by 3.39% based on, like I said, historical averages for the past 25 years. And then that would be $81.36 on your baseline bill of $200 per month or $2,400 per year. So that means after one year, your annual bill, if last year it was $2,400, uh, this next year it would be $2,481.36. And as you can see, it goes up from here. And so when you start to account for inflation, one of the things you'll start to see is that this chart really makes, you know, 10 years go by in a blink of an eye when I think about what happened over the past 10 years. 10 years ago was when I went into HVAC. And it's funny because the apartment that I rented when I first moved to Denver, when I first went into HVAC, you know, it rented for $900 a month. And now that same apartment is about $2,000 a month. So inflation is a real thing, even though we kind of take it for granted. But in this example, you can see that that, you know, after 10 years, your annual bill basically goes from $2,481.36. And then in that 10 year mark, we're basically at $3,213.60. So it's gone up $800, you know, over that 10 year period. And if you fast forward another 20 years, you can see that that annual bill is almost doubled. It's basically about to hit four grand annually. So $3,945. And again, these are all based on average inflation data numbers for specifically the energy sector because they vary by sector. So I'm not just using, you know, the Fed's target inflation of 2% because we know that's just a target. We haven't even hit it yet. So anyways, what this next column is that you can see right here where it talks about cumulative bill, what cumulative bill is, is this is the bill or the amount of money we paid for energy basically to date since we've had the system and installed, assuming we switched to a heat pump, we put in solar panels, and then we offset our energy usage. So we're basically 
you know, off grid, not dependent on the utility provider anymore. This means that, and you can see this is basically the break even point is at the 13 year mark, we have spent $38,603.76. Now, the reason I would say we've broken even is that in the scenario that I wanted to spell out is there's a couple of assumptions. I probably should have started with this, but I'll start with it now. So one is we want to look at the heat pump cost. Now, what is the heat pump cost in this scenario? Just to keep it simple, we put it kind of on the high side of about $20,000, assuming you're getting a high high-end inverter-driven heat pump. And then for our solar setup, we put it kind of in the uh, mid-range. Same thing, around $20,000 for that solar setup. Depending on the size of your house, these things could be you know higher or lower. Uh, we've been in houses where this is double or triple, especially when they have three or four systems or you know lots of big solar array, a lot of consumption. And so that's going to change that. But in this instance, that means you know that our total investment that we would have made for this setup would have been $40,000, right? So at $40,000, if we're spending that upfront, right now, there's a couple things that you also want to account for that we can kind of take off of this. Now, one of it is on this heat pump side, there's a $2,000 heat pump tax credit. There can be higher credits based on income, but the biggest thing is for people that are really looking to offset their taxes, you'll get a $2,000 deduction there. And then you get 30% of the solar costs. So if you spent 20,000 on solar, this would actually be $6,000 in addition. So basically this $40,000 investment actually after the tax credits becomes $32,000. So this is really the number that you want to look at more than the $40,000 because of the incentives that are available in the marketplace right now. But I'm just pointing that out, like I said, even if there was no incentives, you can see that right here at this 13 year mark is about where we break even. When we account for the tax credits, you can see that you break even basically by year 11. And then the reason that this is important is because for this exercise, we assume basically a 20 year life cycle. Most systems, and this is going to vary when it comes to HVAC, your replacement might be, you know, 10 to 15 years if you're in a climate where you use it a lot, especially for cooling. If you're looking for a place like Houston, Texas, right? Or Dallas, HVAC is running, you know, 10 months out of the year, right? And so you're going to be having, it's a little bit different. You might have a 10 year replacement cycle, 15 year replacement cycle in these markets for your HVAC, but solar is pretty universally about a 25 year replacement cycle. And then for HVAC, for example, in Denver, we see things last about 20 years or even longer, uh, sometimes 25 years out here. But for the most part, we tell people to budget for replacement between 15 and 20 years, depending on the type of system that they're installing. So when you see that your break even point is about at that 13 year mark, what really starts to add up is as this inflation accelerates over the 25 year period, your bill, you can see at that 25 year mark, if you assume, hey, this thing actually lasted a full 25 years, including the heat pump and the solar panels, you would basically have a starting bill of $2,400 that ended up being $4,400 after inflation, which means your cumulative bill would have been $86,442, which would have been the amount of money that you spent to heat and cool your home for energy. Again, this is the amount of money we're assuming that you're spending on your HVAC. We're not talking about other, you know, consumptions in there. So when you take solar and place it into it, it's about getting off the grid so that you're not reliant on natural gas and you're not just using electric heat. That's the purpose of this is that like, all your bills, including, you know, whatever you use to cook, anytime you turn on the oven, assuming you have an electric oven, things like that. That's where the savings really starts to add up because basically off of this $32,000 is what you had to spend in order to get this set up in the first place. But at the 25 year mark, you would have had to spend $86,000 on electricity, which in this example is giving you about $50,000 in savings. Now you can make these projections less rosy, more rosy, whatever you want. I tried to just make it kind of middle of the road and show you what happens when you account for inflation, because this is what you can see over here. When I look at the amortized costs for that heat pump, we're talking about $2,000 a year. If we're taking the actual cost of 40,000, if we're taking the cost after incentives of 32,000, we can really scratch these last, I guess that would be one, two, three, you know, four payments in terms of the amortized cost. But basically assuming there was no rebates, right? You're total savings at the 20 year mark would be at, you know, 25 grand sort of thing. So it's something where it's definitely makes a lot of financial sense if you're going to be in the home for a while. Now, the good news is, is if you do this, you make this investment and then suddenly three years from now, you end up having to move. This is a substantial investment. So it will add to the value of your, of your home. I don't know if it would add on a dollar for dollar basis. I do know that when you're buying solar panels, you definitely want to buy them. You don't want to lease them. Leasing can create definitely some 
caveats when you go to actually sell the home versus a purchased or financed solar setup. So that's just something to consider food for thought, because as you can see, this is a pretty substantial savings. It's going to vary based on your consumption. But again, it definitely does make sense in the long run because you're not just offsetting your HVAC usage, you're offsetting all your usage in your home. So that's why we really like this type of setup. So again, we hope you found this content helpful. I definitely put a lot of you know time and thought into this to make sure that I was putting out a piece of content that was relevant to you. So if you did enjoy it, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. So we hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen that YouTube thinks you should watch as well as some videos about some of our favorite inverter air conditioners. So make sure you check those out and we will catch you on the next episode.